everyone and welcome to the NBA Show Reviews. This is James Cork and with me I have Norman Sanso. Hello. And awesome brownie reviewer Silver Quill. Ah, yes, thank you. Thank you. I have not done a video for this episode yet. I know. Uh, that goddamn voice box. I swear to God, I'm gonna take it away from you. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> this new denial. <laughs> uh. I'm miles away from you. I cannot take your voice box anyway. None can touch my voice box of awesomeness. <laughs> did you bring it to the con? I did not. I was loaded down with equipment and cosplay equi as, uh, stuff as was. Oh, that'll be uh, funny. Yeah, that'll that be funny. And then people, with, people who knows that knows our show. Yay! Ah, uh, it would have been fun if you had the voice, the the sound box. I keep calling it voice box. I'm such a modern. Ah, <gasps> but guys, new horses. New show, new episode, new season. Oh my god, that's so good. It feels so good. And new reviews, <sighs> and new reviews. Uh, and new it's... pressure. <laughs> <laughs> it's been so long. <laughs> uh, oh boy. I'm okay now. <laughs> uh, it's been so long though. It's so good. But, yeah, I mean, new season. We're going to be reviewing, uh, in today's episode, we will be reviewing episodes one and two of season five, titled The Cutie Map, uh, with story by Megan McCarthy and written by Scott Sonborn and M.A. Larson. Wow. It is such a combination of writers that is quite impressive. This is the first time that we see an episode signed by M.A. Larson in two years. Wow. Where was he before this? The last uh, he has been promoting his book, the the book whose name I never remember, but I know the premise of. Mm -hmm. I completely forgot about it. Is this like boot camp for uh, for uh, witches and fairies, and it has a similar vibe to Friendship is Magic. Mm -hmm. So he has been busy doing that. Awesome. Although that that conjures images. I've never seen a weaker bunch of fairies. <laughs> I find that offensive. <laughs> uh. <laughs> I can, Im well, I can imagine uh, Seabreeze uh, in that, <laughs> that situation. But yeah, guys, new episode. I mean, this is this is quite a thing. I mean, this has been the longest hiatus ever. And we're finally having new uh, new episodes of this show that we all know and love so much. So, uh, like, in the spirit of the, the review show, and just to, just to uh, give everyone a quick synopsis of it before uh, we jump into it to talk about the whole episode, the themes and everything. What what did you guys think about these two parter? Because, I mean, this is one very atypical combination of episodes. I mean, it's, it's not a slice of life, but it's not an epic, magnificent adventure like, I don't know, fighting Lord Tyrek or looking for Princess Celestia and Princess Luna in the Everfree Forest. This is this is a very low key kind of adventure. I think it's a very personal adventure. It's that this this affected our heroines on a very innate level. Uh having your cutie mark torn from you, having uh having to face this alternate view on harmony. It went against so much of the uh the format for two part adventures that I'd come to expect from the show. I mean I even made a mad lib about it for crying out loud, but this one broke the mad lib. <laughs> Uh, I don't know. With this one, when the only thing I've seen of this one is just the animatics that went down at San Diego Comic Con, was it? Yeah, last year's uh, San Diego Comic Con. Yeah, so that's the only thing I know of it. But other than that, this is totally fresh in my mind where we see the ponies going to a town and then... It, Adventure Ho. I mean, what is, what else is there to say? Because this is not your typical premiere episode. Because in season one, we have the Return of Nightmare Moon, where the ponies beat down a big giant monster. And in season two, we have them beating down a big giant monster, which is Discord. In season three, we got them beating down Sombra. Yeah, it's like, in, yeah, it was, this isn't like a, a threat like Chris Hallis, Sombra, Discord, Nightmare Moon, or, or T-Rex. This is a, like Silver just said, this is a very personal kind of adventure, which mm. is very atypical for this show. Yeah. Uh, I mean, yeah. No, uh, go ahead, Norman. I mean, it, this sets the tone, or this sets the tune for 
Oh, this sets the tone, was it? Yeah, this sets the tone for how episodes from now on will go. Because if you think about it, like Silver mentioned in his uh, video with Dr. Wolf, it's going to be one of those interesting adventures where it's going to be the main six or it could be selected ponies to handle a problem. And if they go that route where Applejack and Rainbow Dash are the only ponies need to be there to solve the case, that will be interesting. Uh, we are not saying if we did like the episodes or not. Oh, I mean, <laughs> clearly by our tone, it's you know, synonymous, right? We like it? No? Yes? Yes. 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 Uh, I, I was a bit like, I, I did like it when I watched it, but I was a bit kind of like let down when uh, towards the end. But this is one of those episodes that the more I think about it, uh, well, these are some episodes that the more I think about it, the more I like them. Does it ever happen to you that you go watch a movie to the movies and you are like, yeah, that movie was okay, I guess. Uh, I, I think I need more th- to, to think about it a little, a little Transformers bit more. Transformers 4. Uh, no, I'm not talking about Transformers 4. <laughs> <laughs> that movie is bad through and through. Okay? Not really. I thought it was good, but when I finished watching it, it was yeah, it's not as good as I thought. Yeah. Yes, I, I usually watch a movie go away and realize that I just watched a bad movie afterwards. It's <laughs> rare, rare that I go the opposite direction. Really? I watched you... the first Transformers. It's like, oh, that was so funny the way Bumblebee peed on a human. Oh, wait, that was stupid. And that made no sense. Well, and that I'm made thinking... no sense. And that I'm thinking... made no sense. <laughs> It's that's Michael Bay's career in a, in a nutshell. But no, for me, it's it's something that has happened to me with, uh, for example, with Throne Legacy. When I went to watch Throne Legacy, I didn't like the movie at first, but then I went into the into the TV tropes page for it, and I read a lot of the a lot of the things that happen in the movie. They explained them to me, and then I was like, wow, I'm actually changing my opinion on it. And then the more I thought about it, the more I realized that it's a actually a lot more clever and a lot more. Uh, and a lot, a lot better thought out than people gave it credit for. And the same thing happened to me with the cutie map. This two parter is very, inter- very entertaining and very interesting. But if you start scratching the surface, you can get a lot more things out of it. I mean, uh, from now on, we're gonna start talking about what the episode is about, the characters in it, what the plot is, synopsis, everything, etc. So if you haven't watched the episodes, uh, avoid. From now on, we're not going to talk about. We're going to be talking about the episode. Is starting right now, so don't say we didn't warn you guys. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, All right, mm-hmm. are you ready to go balls deep into spo- <laughs> ready to go balls deep into spoilers? Because I am. Oh please, there might be children listening. What someone think of the children? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, the episode starts right more or less where we left it in uh, in season four with Twilight having this. Uh, castle now available at Hasbro store for thirty nine ninety nine, and uh, trying to figure out what is their purpose and what they are going to be doing in that castle. And as they all sit on the on the respective places, the a mob sprouts from the ground, and the, uh, apparently their cutie marks indicate them that they have to go somewhere in Equestria to go solve a problem. Which is why so, we have the first <clears throat> case of equestrian GPS. <laughs> We're Siri. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I like to think that they all have pagers in their butts. Oh, God. Have you seen that picture on Equestrian Daily? That was so cute. <laughs> <laughs> Between the vibrating cutie marks and the vibrating diary, I think the show creators are trying to give us, like, hint, hint, nudge, nudge. We want you to draw this kind of stuff. Oh, kind, did you know kind of thing? that uh, the color code for most of the ponies in Hex is 69? Yeah, I know. We are, we are, we are getting, we are, we are, uh, tangent, tangent, <laughs> gonna tangent. Let's not go inception. Come okay. on. Give it focus. I, I, I thought I was the irreverent one. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. Norman is. So yeah, I mean, I, I don't know about you guys, but I really like the idea of them having to be together in order to activate the QT map and seeing where they have to go next to solve a mission. It's something that reminds me of um, of another Hasbro property, Transformers. Which generation? Uh, G1. Okay. G1. Yeah, the, the, they, they, like, that QT map is very holographic in nature. It, it looks like it's 3D. Mm-hmm. Like, it, it glows from, with, from inside of the table. 
And I like the idea that um, the one that you brought up, Silver, that they might be called to different places and they might not all of them be together at the same time. Mm -hmm. uh, that, and there's even greater conflicts that can come from this, though I wonder if I should save that for the end. Save that for the end. Oh, yeah, save yeah, it. let's save that. Let's save, save it for it. the end. Yeah, mm -hmm. and, and this, and I have to say that William Anderson did a great job in everything with this because um, we all seen the animatics for this scene itself where the map pops out and all that, and we see that I, I think to me this is the funniest scene, even after seeing it as an animatic, even after seeing it premiere and watching it for the second time, is where. Spike stomps. Hi, mom on. and dad. <laughs> yes, that one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that one. <laughs> uh, it never I, gets old. It never gets old. I had the pleasure of seeing this at BabsCon with an entire standing room only of Bronies. Big mm. theater. Mm -hmm. Everyone laughed, howled at that scene. <laughs> the, the expression on Pinky before and after. And Pinky... Bless her, her humor was in top form, this this two-parter. Yeah, and like oh, I said before, yes. Will Anderson did a great job with the sound effect on this one because without that, it was just basically mute. It was, uh, it, yeah, the, the, the stomp. <clears throat> <laughs> but yeah, you're absolutely correct. The, 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 the humor in Pinkie Pie, this is the Pinkie Pie that, um, this is not the Pinkie Pie that we deserve, but the Pinkie Pie that we need. <laughs> yes. It's, it's, it is her, her humor reacting to the situations that surround her, not her being annoying and mm -hmm. forcing the plot forward. That was, she was really good in this episode. In this episode, it's really, really good. I, it's hard for me to call it plural. Let's call it episode. It's a single one yep. divided in two. So the map takes them to the, a region so far in Equestria that not even the train can reach there. Like it, it is funny. We actually see the train reaching the, in the end of a track. <laughs> Which that is we unique. See, that... We also Go see ahead. the train has the best brakes in the <laughs> Oh, it I does. Mean, my God. Yeah. That that thing stops on a dime. It's like, okay, we we need that tech here in America. <laughs> uh... And then we'll sell to Spain and everywhere else for uh, grossly inflated prices because we're, you know, jerks. Capitalist. Spain will... Spain will not buy it. We will just put giant springs at the end of the tracks and say, okay, you have to bounce off of that or else you'll die. <laughs> well, uh, I always wanted to enjoy spring in Spain. <laughs> Low-budget low solution. <laughs> oh, God. I walk right into that. <laughs> I walk right into that. <laughs> so but, they arrive yeah, at the village, right? They arrive at the village, which right away it has an ingenious design. I love the fact that the houses make the equal sign. <laughs> Uh, because they are like two rows of houses, and they mm -hmm. are like equal sign. It's, it is very subvert when it comes to that. And uh, apparently, everybody seems very happy at the village. Look at all those big step for wife smiles. <laughs> they are so happy, but Pinkie Pie is having none of it. Yeah, she, she knows, knows those smiles. <laughs> she knows something is bad. As she says, those smiles are bad news. <laughs> those smiles are bad news, and she's right. Uh, yeah. But. We don't know that yet. So, mm -hmm. but that's, that's one thing that I didn't notice. Well, later on, I, I can bring it on later on, but I'm gonna bring it back, uh, uh, I'm gonna bring it up now. Every single pony in the village has the same haircut. And I didn't notice that until the end of the episode. Mm -hmm. They kind of drive it home during the grand musical number, where one pony has the alternate hairstyle. The positive to this is that you can basically make one character model puppet. <laughs> And just recolor it over and over and over and over. <laughs> it's a village full of OCs made with the pony creator too. Oh no. <laughs> or worse still, it's G3. Oh no. <laughs> we, we all praise for the goddess Rainbow Dash always dresses in style. <laughs> uh... Darlings. Uh, but yeah, no, they arrive to the village and they are like, well, nothing seems to be going on here. Well, can you take us to your, take us to your leader? <laughs> <laughs> and so they are taken to Starlight Glimmer, who is not a monster like Rainbow Dash was hoping, is not a horrible creature or anything. She's just a regular looking pony. And that's the other thing that I found really interesting is that the antagonist for this episode is not a monster. It's not something outside of a question. It's just a regular unicorn. Mm -hmm. 
when we reached near the end, I, I need to say something about her, but let's carry on. Yeah, so... Yeah, and then the, uh, she decides to introduce them to the village in the most uncomfortable, most, oh my god, I want to get okay. out of here and go home song I have ever... No, but it's, it's uncomfortable for all the right reasons. Yeah, okay, but James, I... think about it, think about it. Uh, Starlight Glimmer can break into song and dance where every town's people sing and dance. If she can do it, what difference does it make Pinkie Pie? Like, she goes into song and dance, the whole town goes breaking in song and dance. Well, uh, you see is that I I think it's... The, I'm not going to make a parallelism with... Uh, I don't want to make a parallelism with Lenny Riefenstahl and those films that she did that she did for the for the Third Reich. Okay, I'm not going to do that. Even well, though there is one shot that is very much like that when all the ponies are marching <laughs> and they are singing, they are singing, "You can have a nightmare <laughs> if you never dream." Oh, and I am like, "This is a kid show. I'm going to have it on a library to 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 the Nazis. This is oh, this God. is what is this? <laughs> and why am I liking it so much?" <laughs> Oh. It, it was a catchy tune. It was a super well, catchy tune. It's actually, there's a, um, Dan Ingram put a tweet out that was based on a World War II propaganda <laughs> uh, music. So you're not far off with your uh, comparison. I, I believe it. I mean, I was having flashbacks to that We Prepare song from Lion King. Uh, oh. But when it comes to the tune and the way that the notes, the, the musical notes were put together, I was actually having a flashback to a French movie called Calbier, Calbert, the, the Ordeal, which is a very messed up movie. Um, and I'm just going to give you the skinny of it, is that the movie is about a guy who gets stranded in the middle of nowhere and walking around trying to find help, he ends up in a village. And the first thing that happens to him is that the mayor of the village kidnaps him and forces him to cross the rest as his dead wife. That is the uh, plot of the. That is that is the first thing that happens in the movie. Oh, so he's lost in Texas. <laughs> uh, I, I I am not sure if it's America or if or if it's Europe, but there is there is one scene in that movie where um they are in the they are in a bar or in a restaurant, and one of the guys starts playing the piano, and he's to, he's playing this very low uh, low key kind of like dark tones like and the it's not like a mishmash it, it's a melody that makes sense but it's played with very dark tones and all the people in the restaurant they stand up and they start dancing like puppets without strings in a very awkward fashion and that moment in this episode made me flashback to that scene that is that uh, that weirded me out, but it weirded me out for all the good reasons. I was like, "This is so good! Like this is th- this is how you make a kind of like a totalitarian regime song." If if, if not if North Korea had a cartoon, this would be the theme song. No. <laughs> Moving on. Oh God. Kim yeah, Jong Un is like, "That's my pony. <laughs> That's my pony." Um, but okay, okay. Before we continue with that, I think we should address the elephant in the room because we just we just brought it up. Um, there's been a lot of debate uh, mm-hmm. with people wondering if this is a if this is a debate against totalitarian regimes or if it's um, it's a criticism on equality or if the or if the episode is smoking Tumblr. It's funny. Tumblr was losing losing its mind <laughs> after the release of the episode because they thought it was throwing a jab at them. Uh, uh, my, my explanation for this is. They thought it was a good idea. I will tell you one thing. If you don't know of Chip and Dale mm-hmm. and the episode about the Cuckoo Cola Code... Oh, I remember that one! Yes! You might be misinterpreting the meaning of the episode. It's not an episode about totalitarian regimes. It's an episode about kids don't join cults. <laughs> you know, it's funny. I uh, I agree. It is... A, I call it a cult more than anything. And it actually meets the eight points for brain, for thought reform. Robert yes. J. Lif- uh, Robert J. Lifton, he created an eight-point model for thought reform, and this meets all the criteria. Oh, wow. Which is so. terrifying when you think about it. And this is a kid's show? Yeah, how did we get a cult in a kid's show? How did we start talking about Marxism and communism in a well, kid's show? You, you, but you here see we are. That back then in the 80s, and let's not forget that My Little Pony was born in the 80s, and it's an 80s show, and... Uh, it did have some risque episodes, like the one with Katrina is all about drug addiction, and you can take that parallelism and take it with the the Inspiration Manifestation episode, 
which is uh it's I, I will always see that episode as an allegory to um to to drug addiction, especially because of that saved by the bell reference. <laughs> uh about an episode about drug addiction. But back in the eighties and nineties, a lot of kids shows have very risk uh very risk messages. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Like don't do drugs, like hell, do you remember that Brave Star episode about don't do drugs? Oh, <laughs> Yeah, the sh- that the was child. A that was a grim episode, and I like the fact that in in this day and age, it's very like, oh no, don't tell this to the children; they might learn something. <laughs> so it's it. I like the fact that this this new show said, you know what, screw it, we're going to we're going to talk about this subject because it is worth talking about, and I like how they did it. It was very very good. It was a very um. Not in your face, but like you said, it went through all the points. Like it, it did meet the cri- the eight points criteria. It's a, a pretty, pretty remarkable. I I don't know all about that, but from what I can saw, it's one of those big guy trying to uh, impose its thought to others kind of deal. Like when I first saw this, I thought of Avatar: The Legend of Korra season one with yes. the who's that guy again? I forgot his name, but yeah, I, I thought about him and whatnot. So yeah, pff, ponies doing it, I don't see what's wrong. That is probably the other criticism that uh, the people have brought up is that they say, "Oh, they're copying Legend of Korra." I'm like, guys, you know there is only seven plots in the world, right? Mm-hmm. But sooner or later, there is going to be some cross between uh between My Little Pony and other and other shows. Uh, you can take half of the uh, uh, plot points of half of the episodes of season one and say, "Oh, that is from Lord of the Rings, <laughs> and that is from Star Wars, and that is from blah blah blah." It's 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 a it's a perfectly good new uh, perspective on it. Never done with ponies. Mm-hmm. So after the song, Rainbow Dash laughs, <laughs> just like Rainbow Dash to brush it off like it was nothing. <laughs> Keeping up your cutie mark. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. Like we're, we're like we are going to do that. <laughs> Just wait. <laughs> and uh, they decide to start investigating around, trying to figure out what's actually happening. And uh, we get to the restaurant scene, or if we can call it a restaurant, <laughs> the muffin uh, scene. The muffin scene. Yeah. The muffins. The, yeah. Do, do you know the muffin scene? The muffin scene. <laughs> I I like I like this. Uh, part of process that they have because Fluttershy Fluttersh- is the one here that seems that okay um, everybody here is happy so what's wrong we shouldn't judge because uh, maybe they enjoy their way of living so we should not judge like they may do different uh, they may do things a bit different than we're used to but there's no reason to be rude and stuff so she brings it up yet the others think it's really strange yeah, like Fluttershy, there is kindness, and then there is, um, this is weird. <laughs> they all well, look the same, they all have the same haircuts. Well, I also remember that Fluttershy has been outright abused by Ponyville's residents in the past. I, I thought she was the most appropriate character to be kind of swayed towards this line of thinking. It's just on the fact that no one's acting like a jerk. Mm-hmm. That's so true. And granted, she... Put in your hoof down. <laughs> anyway, uh, sorry, I had a bug in my throat. Yeah, but she's the right character for this because she was treated badly. And since the town was so nice and everybody was having a good time, she thinks it's okay. Even if it means sacrificing your own cutie mark. And of course, this causes an argument between the, between the main six mm-hmm. that gets quickly, uh, quickly solved. And there I am thinking, so, oh wow, that is so cool that you managed to solve the argument in like a couple of minutes. Why didn't you do the same thing in other episodes? <laughs> because they didn't want to make a scene. <laughs> of course, of course. That, however, I do like that uh, they take that moment to, um, to introduce this Sugar Bell character, uh, mm. where, uh, she's like, she's like, uh, uh, she, le- she sees them uh, interacting like this and she's like, meet, uh, meet me in the basement. It's before some pony else notices. And they're like, what do you think was all that about? And, uh, and Applejack is like, well, we don't know, but we have to go talk to him. Talk to, talk to, talk to her. Uh, Pinky, you have to go eat all of these muffins. Why? Because you ordered all of them. Now <laughs> shut up and munch. <laughs> oh, poor Pinky. Poor Pinky. I like that. I like that her gluttony actually ends up biting her in the, in the butt. <laughs> I mean, okay, here's the thing. She, 
muffins. What can go wrong, right? Like yeah. you have, you're only specialized in muffins. What can go wrong? Uh, apparently, the question is, what can go right? <laughs> oh, so I can, true. I can only imagine how tasteless those muffins must be. They must be like a uh, air airplane food. That kind of taste. She said it was like cardboard or even cardboard tasted better. Yeah, she's accidentally eating cardboard, which is no small feat on her part. <laughs> uh, so they went into the basement. Uh, well, technically they went inside to get more muffins and went to the basement where Sugar Bell and let's see, Sugar Bell, Party Favor and who's that flyer again? Night, Night Glider. Night Glider. Wow, that's a cool name. Like, like, she's uh, she's uh, Fleetfoot's lo- long lost sister. <laughs> you mean Ricola? <laughs> she even has the same kind of like uh, lisp. Really? But with, but with yeah. a much more likable personality. <laughs> oh yes. Oh yes. Yeah. She's not that of um. She's not that much of a. That's not a word. <laughs> oh. You went there. No, you didn't. <laughs> oh. Wow. Oh, it could be. It could be worse. But no, yeah, she's uh, she's she does she is more likable than uh, than Fleetfoot. But yeah, these these four character, these three characters, they are like, oh my god, I wish he could get my cutie mark back. And they're like, how can you get it back? How can you even take it away from the f- to begin with? And they're like, oh, we are not taken taken away from them. We can go visit them whenever we want. Go visit the uh, the cutie mark bolt. So. They go to a Starlight Glimmer. I almost call her Sunlight Glimmer. <laughs> this show and the weird ways they have to combine a funny name with sun name or light name. It's like Twilight Sparkle, Starlight Glimmer, Sunset Shimmer. It's like, what's next? Dusk Shine? Oh, God. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> but, yeah, well, they already established that they can turn mares into stallions. So Not really. Well, the fact that they hint that there is a spell that can do that, even though Twilight didn't use it. <laughs> I don't think so. There's a spell. It's one of those crazy things. But anyway, moving on. They, they go to the... Uh, go ahead, go ahead, Silver. Oh, I was going to I was gonna take us on a tangent that they, they kind of imply there is a, a gender swap uh, spell, but it's neither here nor there. <laughs> we will talk about it when we get to that episode. Oh, God. Coming soon, season five finale, all of the main six turn into stallions. Oh my. I, I don't know what's That's wrong. making Spike very confused about what he feels he feels for reality. <laughs> oh god. Uh, anyway, um still with me guys? Yep yep. I killed the call. Not against you. <laughs> hey, if that episode comes, it comes. Anyway, uh they reach the they go to the cutie mark vault, which is something that none of them has seen before. Because it's full of cutie marks and uh, they present the staff of sameness, which happens to be a relic of I don't know the name of the guy because I I always lose the name of the it's the, name the of... great mage Medwork Medwork Bro- oh, Meadowbrooks Meadow- Meadowbrooks Meadow- nine enchantment items enchanted items Mel- Mel Brooks Meadow Mel Brooks is Meadow Brooks the... oh. Mel, Bro- oh. Mel Brooks is in Ponyville <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what to say. <laughs> <laughs> Meadow, M- Meadow, uh, Meadow Brooks. That's how I said. I'm just, I'm just happy that for once it's not Star Swirl the Bearded. But it does bring yeah. up a fact where there's what, um, more mages besides Star Swirl? Remember that Star Swirl was focused in Equestria? Mm-hmm. And if Maybe there, one, there could be other mages outside of Equestria. If I I'm not mistaken, he said um, this was what um, Eastern or Western? I, I think it was Western, Eastern. Uh, Eastern unicorns. Yes, it, this is Eastern Equestria. Yeah, that, that's why. That, yeah, yeah, it's Eastern unicorns kind of deal. So this is going to be interesting. Could he be Asian? <laughs> <laughs> they do present the stuff of sameness to them, and right as as. Uh, uh, Starlight Glimmer is asking them about how come you knew about this, the cutie mark poll? How did it come in conversation? Thus come Pinkie Pie to butt in and say, oh, because some ponies that means that cutie marks told us about it. <laughs> well uh, done. Way to go, Pinky. Way to go. Well done. Yay. Um, well, <laughs> That's something, tells, something tells me that Starlight Glimmer might have noticed sooner or later that... Mm-hmm. Uh, Indeed, they were being led by uh, by other ponies to yeah. do the cutie mark bolt. So she she could have been able to do two and two together. She doesn't seem to be very dumb. 
Yeah. In fact, that is that is one of the terrifying things about Starlight Glimmer is that she is surprisingly smart. Mm-hmm. Oh, she's league smarter than some of the other villains, some of the more powerful villains we've seen in the show so far. Oh, yeah. And taking a look-see here, like, even her magic is able to um, rip the cutie mark of an eloquent princess. So what does that say about her power level? It's, it's over 95! <laughs> <laughs> James. Uh, there's, there's just no escaping it. <laughs> I I set it up really well. <laughs> really well. Good for you. <clears throat> and a fine job you did, too. Indeed. <laughs> so, but... Uh, yeah, is that after... um uh, After they present the staff of sameness, so uh, Twilight realizes that she has to make an Admiral Adbark impression, so it's a trap! Oh, God, yes, I forgot about that one. It's a trap! Uh, <laughs> it's a trap! <laughs> oh, God, and, I just love it. <laughs> as she's ready to... I have no idea what she was going to do, but the way that she was... um If you see her body language, mm-hmm. she was about to blast Starlight Glimmer in the face. With a magic spell or something. I'm going to imagine her going, Magic missile! <laughs> Roll for initiative. Starlight too Glimmer magic, is... too magic. <laughs> too magic, too magic. <laughs> However, Starlight Glimmer is a lot faster than um, than Twilight is or could ever be because mm-hmm. she directs the star, the stuff of sameness, sameness towards her and removes, removes her cutie mark in a very, very disturbing scene. Like, I'm not sure about it, guys, but... if it looks like it hurts. It oh, looks yeah, like it's, it's... Yeah. It's like cutting away a part, uh, skin. And the, the sound that it makes is like... It's like the magic equivalent of ripping apart fabric. And if you see how it, it like it pulls away, there is like a, a, a sliver of magic connecting the cutie mark and the flank that then it's broke... Br- it breaks off. Yeah. And and then they do the same to the to the rest of the main six. And like that is a... That, by the way, that is my favorite scene in the entire uh, two-parter. <laughs> the the moment where I went, one of my favorite, but is like top because I love to see my fa- favorite character suffer. That looks like it. It's hard to watch. It's horrible, but it's so good. Yeah, well, it, it hurts so good. <laughs> it so, does. It does. And at the same time, all of our main characters become a bit grayer. Just a bit. Yeah. Yeah. They get they get a bit discolored, kind of like what happened with um Discord. in the Discord mm. episodes. Yeah. Yeah. Although that's <sighs> that's an important note for later. Mm-mm-mm. And after this we move on to part two of the cutie maps. Yeah, yeah but imagine, imagine if they had done like with the <laughs> season two premiere oh, and they no. divided it into uh, in two weekends. Can you imagine that? Okay, guys, see you next weekend. <laughs> yeah. Bye, as, little that's bye. all are here. It's all our heroes are doomed. Dun, dun, dun. Same time next week. Same pony time. Same pony, pony channel. channel. <laughs> pony. Well, uh, fortunately for us, we didn't have to wait that long. And uh, wow, the next scene, our main six are trapped inside a room with mind control tactics. Like, oh God, was that? Yeah. My little Orwellian. <laughs> That was the point where I had to check if I was still watching the same episode. And somebody didn't sleep in a a, a, a fanfic based oh, on Fall Order Quest or, or something. Because that, that is a legit brainwashing technique. Putting a message in the speakers, having it on, ha, make it a loop, and keep it going over and over again until you have converted the poor devil that you have trapped inside the room. Oh. That, that is messed up. That is grimdark. Oh yeah, and it's so good. Ah, <laughs> uh, that that, that oof, I don't know what to say. Like everything in that room was made to make you agree with the townsfolk. Like, ah, uh, just no. And add to it when uh, the main six get sealed in again with, oh, party favor. Mm-hmm. Oh Lord, you see what you see what they could become. Mm. And he, he, here's another interesting fact about. Uh, getting their cutie marks removed because uh, we can see that each of them has lost their colors and whatnot, but it's also lost. They lost their what you might call this, their personalities because with rarity when she saw the drapes, yeah. um, and she agrees her cutie mark glows in yeah, agreement. It, like why? it's like 
it, it's like it, it's affecting their bodies, their, yeah. their, their, their minds as well. So she cannot tell if the if, if the drapes are pretty or not. Mm-hmm. I think they look nice. So do I. <laughs> <laughs> ah. Should I? Oh, I, I shouldn't. I shouldn't be rubbing my hands in the light, but I love that. <laughs> I love that. So, but, but, Although, yeah. we, truthfully, though, the greatest sufferer is Applejack, who can't make countryisms. What's the, <laughs> what's the point in living after that? Oh, boy. Yeah. Uh, and Fluttershy can't speak to birds anymore. And th- that's the thing. Like, her cutie mark represents her talent to speak with animals and all that. And not being do- not being able to do that, ay ay ay. Yeah, and, and, and Pinkie Pie doesn't find things funny anymore. It's a perfect plan! I guess. <laughs> uh... But yeah, it's like, um, but Twilight knows that something is wrong. Twilight knows that something is, uh, out of place because this Meadowbrook had only eight relics, not nine. So mm-hmm. the staff couldn't be one of them. Yeah. So she's trying to figure out a way to get them out of there. And, I have to admit, it is a very clever plan. Yep. They have to make them believe that they have accepted their ways. And no one is p- more perfect for this plan than Fluttershy. <laughs> and, no, I, I love this because it's taking Fluttershy's weakness, which is the, you know, uh, oh, I'm very kind. I'm very accepting. I don't have the right to, to judge these ponies. And I, I, and it, it is great because they take that that could be seen as a weakness and they make it her str- the strength. Like if it wasn't for the way that she is, they would have been unable to get out of there. True, true. And at the same point, at the same time, she was trying to, how to say, um, trying to brush it off or trying to deflect the fact that she is the plan. And in the end, like, okay, yeah, okay, it looks like I'm the weakest link. I'll, I'll try. Well, I, I love that she talks. She pretty much talks herself into it. They're so nice <laughs> until they locked us in here and tried to bring. Them. Okay, I'll help. <laughs> They've but, been so uh, nice with us. <laughs> although I will say, in talking with a fellow uh, reviewer, I won't say who because I don't want to make it sound like I'm calling people out. Mm-hmm. Ooh. This person talked at length about how rarity should have been the choice. Why? Because, how? Why? Because she has a, a talent for manipulation. But not without her cutie mark. Uh, well, there, yeah, I, I don't agree, but I'm just bringing it up because voice of dissent and all that. Mm. I, uh, I, I, can, I, I can see the point there, but like I said, without, not without her cutie mark, because the way Fluttershy is in this scene, it's natural. It's her. It's not her cutie mark doing all the magics. And she's always been shy. She's always been very agreeable. And at front, at, sorry, at the very beginning, she's always, she's seen the town for a kind and very peaceful t- village where it will be fun to live in. But until they lock them inside the room and take their cutie marks away. But yeah. Yeah, I don't think I agree with that uh, fellow reviewer that, that you mentioned either. I uh, It's their opinion. It's their point of view. That's perfectly fine. Mm-hmm. But I think it is a more uh, it is a stronger choice to have uh, Fluttershy uh, uh, become part of the uh, be part of the plan and say, yeah, you are the, you are the one that is supposed to go out there and, and get our, get our cutie marks back for, for everything that is worth. And, uh, son of a gun, it works. I mean, as they are taken out of the village, I love the fact that, uh, they take them out. Sunlight, sunlight, uh, no, a starlight glimmer comes out and she's like, come out. There are some friends who want to meet you. <laughs> I I was reading a list the other day on crack.com about the uh, the techniques that they use to make you join a cult. And oh one God. of the things is that they make you believe that they are your friend. <laughs> oh, that's wow. one of them. And that's the thing. I mean, the fact that they were using the word friend and friendship, but for such insidious uh, <clears throat> ma- means... That is like they they took the that part of the title in the show and they twisted it. They twisted it around and they made it. They messed it up. And I'm like, that is so clever. I like this so much. I, oh. I, I was so happy with how they were treating the whole um, friendship thing for that village. Freaky deaky. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Which combines perfectly well with what Applejack says. It's like that. You don't get it, do you? You cannot force friend uh, friendship on any pony. Yep. Which and... is absolutely true. And the insist, and well, 
sun starlight glimmer says, no problem, we'll just put in, we'll just put them in an the oven to bake a little more and we'll see what happens next. Yeah. So that's why he says, join, oh, even, I'd like to join. Yes? Even better, even better, the double speak is like, this is all part of the re-education process. Oh, God. Yeah, re-education process. What the hell? <laughs> this is so, <laughs> this is awful, but I love it. It's good. It's, it, you, you know what I mean when I say this is awful in that it, it's not badly done. It's great. I, mean, I, I it's, know what it, you mean. It, I know what you mean. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it is okay. horrible for all the good reasons. Technically, I would do this too to someone to convert them to blue magic. <laughs> Shut up, Norman. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> and right after the, Right after they um they were taken back to the cottage, I love how Twilight kind of like pokes Fluttershy with a roof, <laughs> and Fluttershy immediately, I like to join. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh wow! <laughs> Give me the robe and take me to your leader. <laughs> and, oh. and Twilight, Fluttershy, how could you? <laughs> uh, Twilight needs to work on her acting skills, but <laughs> oh god. She should have yeah. learned from Bradley. Put that yeah. your, your hoof up to your head like so. Fluttershy, how could you? <laughs> and this, this next part, oh my goodness. This is the most hardest part to see. Like. Yeah, okay. Oof. This part. Oh, so apparently some of you, some of us told you about not being happy with their cutie marks. Can you please point to us who they were as a sign of your intentions being pure and honest? I shouldn't be thinking on concentration camp movies when watching a kid's show. Why was this hard? Like, whoosh. Whoosh? Oof. Oof. This this was, ooh, ooh, ooh. Like, think about it. Fluttershy, the nicest person, is forced to rat out one of a person, a pony that she just met and put, and put him or her at a fate that she does not know what will happen. Like, that is... Rough. Talk about Green Dark. Mm-hmm. Green no, but dark, really, but... That, that is a very, very reminiscent uh, moment to um, World War Two movies or concentration camp movies when they find the they find the traitor or they find the guy who ratted them out and they're like, point to us who was digging the tunnel under the under the camp. We promise you that nothing bad is gonna happen to you if you tell us. Obviously, that but was, here's, but that, here's the that's thing. Best. Here's the thing. Fluttershy so accepted their ways and she was forced to rat out a person. It's not even um, the ultimatum of tell us who um, told you and we'll let you free. It's no. She already was set free. Now, as a gesture of goodwill, point out who ratted us out. Like, that is even more psychotic. Oh, that's what makes uh, Starlight such an enjoyable villain. Yeah. 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 yeah, but that's and the thing is that she 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 is a... Uh, just said it. She's super enjoyable. Hmm. Here's the thing. Like, okay, when the scene comes, I'll also mention it. But let's carry on. Let's carry on. Although I do want to say we we're coming up with our own language to review this episode. We're saying ooh and uh, <laughs> oh. It's like we, we can only express the unco- this, the discomfort this inspires through sound effects. What could you say? Like well, this episode is just <laughs> it is York. it's not it's not discomfort. Like uh, don't. Don't misinterpret, uh, to you guys that may be listening, don't think that we are, uh, we, don't think that we don't like the episode. Because we do. Mm-hmm. It is a great episode. Mm-hmm. It's awesome. Okay. But it's, it, it is awesome, but the parts that are hard to watch, that's because we do care for the characters and we care for the story and we care for the setting. It is such a very well written, very smart, very clever, uh, take mm-hmm. on, on this kind of story. It is impossible not to get dragged in. So when the bad things happen, of course we're going to suffer. And when the good things happen, they are a breath of fresh air. So, yeah, we're not saying horrible because we hate it. We're saying horrible because it's it's meant to be awful. Yeah. The bad parts feel like they are... Uh, what's the word? The, bad, the, bad for a reason. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Like, it, and, it's, it's intentionally horrible. Like, this uh, this is meant to be... To make you suffer. Yeah, and here's the thing. It's, I, I don't want to say it's cringe-worthy, but it's... At that level where it's cringe-worthy in a good way, because if you see a scene like, I, I don't know, may- maybe a very bad Pinkie Pie scene, it's like, oh god, I don't want to see this, like, it's, ah, no, It's good. uncomfortable, it's uncomfortable because the atmosphere in the entire town is so oppressive. 
that it, it, it feels like Big Brother is watching over these ponies 24-7. And she very much is. Mm-hmm. When the main six, well, when Fluttershy finally joins the, the ranks and they find out that it was Party Favor, the one who wanted to get his cutie mark. Well, he, he gives uh, in for the three of them. And they put him in the shed. Lock him in the shed! <laughs> <laughs> with the, with the rest of the, with the rest of the main six. Um, I, I love that moment where he's like, what was I thinking? Why shouldn't he even wish for me cutie mark back? And he's basically rumbling back and forth saying, it doesn't matter. Sooner or later you will accept our way. You will all accept our ways. <laughs> he's well, a broken, once. he's a broken down character. He's broken. That's, that's what's, <laughs> Oh God! Yeah, it is... and oof. Oof. The, the other thing also <laughs> is yeah. after he gets reformed, he's supposed to be cheerful. Like, oof. see that? There are those sound effects again. But, <laughs> but at the same time, it all—it's sort of funny. It speaks to his own courage that he was willing to speak up in the first place. There's, hmm. you get that sense that there's a really admirable pony under there. But man, they messed him up. But good. They yep, really, yep, yep. they really did. And I, I love, I love this change between Rainbow Dash and Pinkie Pie. This guy is a barrel of laughs. <laughs>, laughs. Laughs don't come in barrels. They come out of their body as a natural response to the light. <laughs> oh, I like to think that if it wasn't for her cheerfulness, Pinkie Pie will be another Mod Pie. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Although, the funny thing is Mod Pie might actually freak out when she sees this. <laughs> oh god. What, what have you done to my sister? <laughs> oh, she will be. She will go to town on on Starlight Glimmer. She will be like, oh. "I am going to rock you like a hurricane." <laughs> oh, I, I can punch a boulder into gravel. Your ass is grass. <laughs> <laughs> oh god! But yeah. Uh, <laughs> so uh, after they um, after they establish that uh, the main five are left in the in the shed with. Uh, with party favor, we then be, uh, go to focus almost exclusively in Fluttershy and Starlight Glimmer, which is really interesting. Like none of the two parters have focused on a character um, other than Twilight until now. Now they are giving the, they're giving the spotlight to Fluttershy, a character that has proven once and again that when put under pressure, uh, even though she reacts cowardly, in the end it was the right reaction. Because she's uh, she's escaping through the chimney, and she's like, "Okay, go to the boat and get the cutie marks back." And then she's like, "I must be very far away from from the house now, very close to the boat." And she has like took like three steps from the chimney. <laughs> a, little, a little bit of dragon shy humor reintegration. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Not that uh, that's a bad thing. I I I giggled at it. Uh, yeah. But the, the 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 scene itself is already funny because um I I think they did a cutaway to a commercial at this point I think I don't really remember, but with if it did it was genius because okay at that point she comes back okay she must be really far from the house nope <laughs> a few steps <laughs> but in the end that is actually something that proves to be uh, a good idea because if she had gone to the bold. We wouldn't know that uh, Starlight Glimmer took the main six cutie marks to herself. And not only that, but as uh, she's walking around in her house, she trips over a, a pail full of water and uh, drops it onto herself, dries it off, sh- and then showing off that she actually still has her cutie mark. What a twist. What a twist. Oh, no. uh, to which she proceeds to cover it up with makeup and all that. And... <laughs> uh, so now Fluttershy with this information, um, she pretty much knows what to do next. So the next morning they go back to open the shed. The main six look absolutely dragged. Like, did, did you see the, I, I was thinking these guys are not eating. Like they are not giving them any food for all we know. They could be locked in the shed without food, without water. They only have those books and that speaker constantly telling them that insaneness that is peace to get rid of your cutie mark and all that. So they look awful. Like, but, but again, for the good reason. They look awful, but it's so, it's so good and well done. And party favorite is like, I want to go, I want to join back, I want to join back, I want to go back with you. I don't want to see my cutie mark ever again. Hmm. And uh, Fluttershy is like, oh, I know, let me lock them in the shed this time. <laughs> 
Yeah. To which, and, uh, yeah, go ahead, go ahead. And that's just, this is what I love about this premiere. Usually it's the villain being so pompous and arrogant that they just sort of ignore our heroines as they reunite. This one, they've got to exercise a little bit of cleverness on their part, a little bit of deception, uh, and set things up. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, because this, this villain actually has things very tight. Hell, even when Fluttershy takes the, the bucket of water and she's going to throw it on, on Starlet's glimmer head, uh, clever not to, to the return of harmony, where Father Shai was also <laughs> dropping buckets of water on characters. Your face. <laughs> she she jumps out of the way. If yeah. it wasn't for that one drop of water, uh, they wouldn't. She wouldn't be revealed to be um to be a liar. Yeah, but here's the thing. I I love this part of the animation where you can see the water bouncing off. The ground and onto her flank because yeah, yeah, you see the the single drop of water. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that that part of the animation was ingenious because without that scene, it would be uh, it would be completely mute and pointless. Because why would Party Favor rub his uh, what you might call that? Um, uh, boot his, on his yeah his, his cloak yeah his cloak on. Um, who is his character name again? Starlight Glimmer. Glimmer. Yeah, Starlight Glimmer. Yeah. You forget the villain's name. (laughs) Well, we keep, we we keep wanting to call her Sunset Shimmer. (laughs) I know. (laughs) It's so difficult not to call her Sunset Sunset Shimmer. It's, oh, come on. Uh, Villains and their names. It's Starlight Sunset Twilight Shimmer Sparkle (laughs) Glimmer. (laughs) Glimmer. I just want, I just want the Dark Lord Bob. That's all. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> oh god! But yeah, so after getting her flank rub, um, hence her cutie mark is exposed. <laughs> oh my! <laughs> oh wow! But I, I do like the setup here. I do like the setup because Twilight Sparkle is the person who is going, willing to give up her um, ways and join the cult. And having an Alicon do that is one big step for their association or their call or whatever you want to call it their cause yes, their I cause. like that they call it the, it's like <laughs> it's going to be good for the cause and I'm like oh you are now referencing the master this is a very <laughs> very very thinly veiled metaphor about cults I love it yeah so oh. anyway she's, she's the person that set it up by um, asking like uh, what does she say here I, I think so but um I just want to make sure if I agree to leave my cutie mark in the vault, I, I'll really be happy. Just look around, blah, blah, blah. Uh, and you wouldn't let me, me just live here in the village, you know? Well, just the whole thing, like, she's been I love that, to... is, that is, that is a setup to remind everyone that is listening that anyone with a cutie mark that is not the equal sign shouldn't be allowed in the village. So when they reveal that the leader of the village is the one that doesn't have an equal sign for a cutie mark, that's right. And I love that moment is that a single drop of water brings down her entire ploy. That tells you how weak and how feeble her whole, her whole organization is. And it also brings an interesting question. So either she takes showers when nobody's watching or she has never bathed in a while. Mm. Mm. That's why you don't include smells in these shows. <laughs> so uh, true. No, so not true. with the smell of vision. Uh, yeah, but, and, hmm? but, oh, actually, this is something I alluded to earlier. On the first viewing, I didn't notice that her coat was any more saturated than anyone else in the town. Ah, uh, yes. So. Right! I, I, I was a little surprised when I saw she had a uh, cutie mark. I was like, oh, wow, she's really pale. You're right, you're right. She doesn't have the, um, she is not like as colorful as the others. But then again, I think, she, uh, I think her, her color scheme could work either way. Like it's like with um, it's like with Double Diamond. You don't notice that he 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 got back his his normal color uh, color code, uh, because it's it's all white. So he's an, he's an albino. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, uh, but yeah, it's like I I also love the fact that it is the townsfolks that start going against her and she's fighting back and that's that this is a terrifying part of the episode when she's like i brought the quality i brought you friendship i created harmony so unless she has an ulterior motive that we may know later on on the season for all we know right now from these episodes she's actually she thinks she's doing things right 
she thinks she's doing the same thing that Twilight Sparkle is doing. She thinks that, that she is bringing harmony to these ponies. Probably. When in fact she's not, she's not doing that. Like, and that is, that is what it, what it's so scary that what is so scary about every cult out there, that the people behind it think they are right. They Which... think that they are correct. And that is terrifying. Yeah, that, that is scary to a point. Like, I mentioned this before, and I like villains like this, where they're doing it because they think they're right, because yeah. they believe what they, because their beliefs is the proper thing or the right way of yeah. life. What, what did, what did Robert Campbell said that everyone is the hero of their own story? For her, Starlight, uh, Starlight Glimmer thinks that she is the hero, that she's the one saving these ponies. She is the one bringing them happiness and harmony. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. In her own twisted ways. She's the champion. Yay. Uh, and after that, I-, I just love how Twilight Sparkles just trying to say, every pony has unique talents and gifts. And when we share Quiet! Them... <laughs> oh god, that face! That Starlight Glimmer is the only one who's able to shut up Twilight in the middle of our friendship speech. Oh, but that's a that's a death sentence right there. You ju- you're taking your life in your hooves, there, sister. Okay, silver, <laughs> silver, love, silver. Did you see the Did you see that comic where uh, Starlight Glimmer shouts to Twilight, "Go quiet!" and then Twilight breaks up in tears. <laughs> and the rest of the main six look at Starlight like they are going to murder her. Okay, <laughs> so silver, silver. Tell us, you, you watched this in a big room with uh, bronies, right? So how yeah. was that? Like, what was the reaction when this happened? Uh, there was some laughter. I mean, everyone was sort of wrapped just in the tension of the scene. <laughs> but there was some laughter when you see Twilight Sparkle. like, <laughs> oh, <she's> like <laughs> did, did someone just not want to listen to a friendship speech? <laughs> that, that, How that, never hap- that? <laughs> that never happened on Yu-Gi-Oh. <laughs> oh, God. Because you get mind wiped. Don't you agree? Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, uh, uh, like, oh, boy, like. Oh, we we move to a part where um and yeah, it's like that is the point where the townsfolks are all going against uh Starlight Glimmer because they have had enough of this. They, they they had like enough of this equality of the stupid burlap sacks and the the everything. We're going to finish this. And then Starlight Glimmer goes to her uh, house while the rest of the town folks go to the go to the kitty mark bolt. And right when Rainbow Dash is going to follow the rest, Fluttershy is like, No, the our cutie marks are not there. She has them in her house. So, and then that was, that was such a great cliffhanger commercial break. It's like, bam. And when we come back, there they are, the, the ponies trying to break the cutie mark bolt. And this is, this is my other favorite moment of the entire uh, two parter. Like, this <laughs> is my favorite moment of the second part where Dime, Double Diamond is like, stand back, everyone. And then he takes the stuff of sameness and throws it against the, the cutie mark bolt. And I am like, they are making a reference to the 1984 Mac commercial. Mm-hmm. You remember that one? Oh yes, with the lady in the uh, in the t-shirt running, and oh my, <laughs> yes, yeah. We, she takes the sledgehammer and throws it to the screen where Big Brother is making his broadcast, and breaks it. You can put both of them uh, next to each other. They are very much done shot for shot. It's like if you needed more. Allegories to 1984, Big Brother, and 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 the cult, uh, the cult thing. There you go. Uh, I, c- crystal clear. I love that. That was such a great moment. Did you say Crystal Pony? <laughs> One will argue how can the staff of sameness break the bolt when it's not uh, when it's not as strong as a pony's hoof. But I go, it's allegorical. Yeah, it is allegorical, and it feels great. The moment where they all recover their cutie marks and they recover their hairstyles. That's the moment where I realized, oh my god, they all had the same hairstyle. I didn't notice that. Yep, and all the animators are having a headache because they need to redraw them. <laughs> like, ah, oh, we were having such an easy go of it. <laughs> yeah. And as the cutie marks escape from their prison, we can see Starlight Glimmer hatching an escape plan. And that's true. Under her bed, there's a escape passage. Who knew? Well, she knew. Uh, <laughs> but doesn't that speak... Doesn't that speak to even she's been lying to herself? She thinks everything's great, but I better have an escape plan just in case. Yep. If she was really, if she was honestly confident, she probably wouldn't need that. But 
overconfidence is one's downfall and apparently she she was not overconfident enough and she has a plan B where technically what was the point of her having an escape plan like if it wasn't for Twilight Sparkle, she wouldn't have needed in the first place, but yeah. Well, th- that's the grudge she's going to carry forward, I'm sure. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. This is she's all your fault, Twilight. And the townsfolks help the main six open um, Starlight's door and discovering that the cutie marks are gone and going through the escape passage. And we can see, um, finally, party favor. He is pretty awesome at party balloons. I I love the fact that he doesn't use his horn but his hoofs in order to create these balloons and, and this is the other part of the of the episode that is really good. The fact that it's not the main six uh saving the day with their sappy magic elements uh, out of nowhere that they did save this uh uh this this pony so they saved the, the ponies now save them back. That was I... that, that is something that I love. Yeah, this this was my big criticism of Twilight's Kingdom that it was all about the main six and they kind of ditched the whole world to get make them the heroes. Now here's the opposite. Mm-hmm. Now now and, here's the world giving back to our heroines. And at the same time, Rainbow Dash is the one that pointed it out. Like we are expecting strange ponies to help us get our own Queen Mark back. Like, whoo! That was uh, how how would I put this? That was uh, two on the nose. Awkward. Yay. <laughs> well, the fact that uh, I'm pretty sure that they did that intentional, like that is Rainbow Dash was speaking the audience. Uh, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It was was the the audience's voice. She's like, "Are we expecting these strangers to help us get our cutie marks back?" And Twilight is like, "They we help them uh, get theirs. Now they are going to help us. We got them out of the out of this dictatorship, to put it in any, hmm. in, in, to being unable to put it in better words. That Starlight Glimmer had them under. Now they are going to help us back, and they do, and they are very good, very efficient at what they do. Like a uh, 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 Sugar Bell is really good with her pie. She has good aim. She manages to slow down Starlight. Party Favor manages to make an entire bridge out of one balloon, which is impressive. Not I really. There's that. multiple balloons, but yeah, well, but just, you only mm. see him. You only you only see him uh, inflate one. But it was great. I mean, I was like, yes, this is how you introduce new characters. You give them, you give them a goal. You give them purpose, and you make them like on that moment where uh, Double Diamond is my favorite of the four. I have to say right away. But that moment where he finds his old skis and he starts reminiscing. That is such a sweet little moment. Of a life that he could have had, but he gave it up just to go be in the village with uh, with Starlight. And Nightclaw is all like, "Can we reminisce later?" <laughs> yes, yes. Can we please have our flashback later? And he's like ready for a dive bomb or something like that. And and he managed to create an avalanche and finally stop Starlight Glimmer, make her drop the but, flasks. Uh, and... There yeah. is one sadder note I have to point out because one reviewer was asking where. Where did all these other balloons come from? That's totally impractical for the balloon bridge. Mm-hmm. Oh, God, yes. And and you just say, you know, this is, this is cartoon logic. They call it hammer space. They call it the magical pocket. Oh, my. Uh, this yeah. is part, part of the point where you have to kind of say, yeah, this show's asking me to accept sort of cartoon logic. Yes. So, I mean, this is it's a cartoon. That, it's a it's, cartoon. You're watching a show about talking horses, for God's sakes. And yeah. not normal colored talking horses. We're talking about pastel colored horses where they have wings and horn. My beliefs in where did he keep those balloons are out the window the moment I went into yeah, the like, show. Yeah, like you have, you're, you're talking about an episode where uh, six pastel ho- color horses who can talk and make magic travel on a train with pastel colors as well that apparently conducts itself because it has no conductor and they end up in this village in the middle of nowhere where everybody has a different cutie mark. Oh yeah, the concept of the cutie mark is completely uh, different and you are you have all of these fantasy elements and you're complaining about not knowing where the balloons are coming from. Um, <laughs> you're Priori- no, you know what? No, I'm calling BS on that. You, your argument is completely invalid. Yeah. You, at I this mean... point, at this point, you are nitpicking. 
Yeah, I mean, yeah. Don't you know about everything? The, the everything is behind you rule in cartoons, <laughs> where a cartoon character can reach from behind them and pull out a brick, an anvil, a hammer, a, a screwdriver, a person, a ship, whatever they need for the situation you, you know, is but, behind them. My logic here is my logic here is like this. See how the framing of the show is. Someone's handing him balloons under him. That's that's it. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, well, you see, because I am a I am a horrible person just absolutely horrible <laughs> okay uh, i'm more asking how he's inflating those balloons without his mouth <laughs> and, all, and all and all i can say is don't anyone pop them you know what i'm going to tell you one thing i was talking about this uh after the episode came out with uh with a group of friends on a skype call and i was like i guarantee you somebody at hasbro right now they are making a party favor balloon inflator where you put the balloon in his mouth or somewhere else and you like crank it up with whatever you want, like the tail or the head and you inflate it. Guarantee you somebody is making a toy of that. And ah. it's not going to get green lighted. It's not going to get green lighted, but that is on a piece of paper right now. I can see it. Oh, Silver, that was just no. That stinks. That's the plan, man. <laughs> He who smelts it, dealt it. Ay, ay, ay. <laughs> I love when you say ay, 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 Norman. <laughs> oh, uh, it reminds me of Jackie Chan Adventures. Uh, <laughs> but anywho, uh, after... Wasn't there, wasn't there a mask episode that was exactly like that? <laughs> How about that? I don't know, I don't remember. Uh, I don't re- do you guys remember the mask I TV do. show? I do. Uh, so that okay. was pretty awesome. Uh, no, I'm I'm old enough to remember when masks stood for transforming cars. And... Oh, I remember that one too. That's right. I'm old. <laughs> I'm so old. But anyway, started like Glimmer drops yeah. the jar and Cutie Max Ahoy. And, yeah, and she lashes out immediately against the the town folks, and she, for all I know, she was going to kill them right there oh, because yeah. that spell looked like it was powerful but in comes twilight and with the power of her uh of her uh, energy bubble energy no, bubbles no, no. it has, it was actually a copy of a uh, stylet glimmer spell yeah, cuz really? she said oh, it... she said i practiced that spell for i said that spell for years i think mm-hmm. she was trying to rip their cutie marks again not really i think she was just trying to blast them off the well with a powerful beam just to i always I always, I, I, I thought that she was like, how could you counter that spell? I've been studying that spell for years. And Twilight is like, I use a blue deck. <laughs> yes, I can counter yes, whatever yes. I want. Uh, you magic guys, I just can't keep up. <laughs> Sorry. Let's see here. But hang on, hang on. I've got the transcript in front because I want to read this. Uh, tsh- what well, I studied that spell for years. How can you... And then, and then I studied for magic years yeah, for years too. Like, and... I also studied for years, <laughs> but if I if it wasn't for my friends, if it wasn't for these five, I wouldn't have been able to to find out that I am the princess of friendship. You know, he, here's where I put a full stop on Twilight's agenda to reform or change Starlight's um, attitude because it's clear that Starlight here was not making friends at the very beginning. She was just there to manipulate and create an army or something, and Having Twilight say about friendship and whatnot, it's kind of mute point by now. Hmm. I'm not entirely sure of that, though. I mean, because Twilight didn't have a story with Starlight Glimmer the same way that she had a story with Sunset Shimmer, so... No, but the point here is, like, take a look-see at her attitude from the very beginning. She was manipulative, and she treated others like they were her underling instead of friends. Her whole attitude, her whole persona, her whole demeanor between the townsfolk were, you are afraid of me. Whatever I do is law. So you better not mess up. Law! I... <laughs> law! <laughs> so you better not mess up because if you do, you will be punished for it. Think about it. That is what a dictator or ruler, a ruler or someone you were afraid of does. If a friend, you do not do that. And Clearly, you can see here that Starlight here is not a friend towards this townsfolk. But she thinks she is. It's sort of, I, I'm still going the self-delusion route. She thinks she's creating friendship, but she's not. Mm, okay, I, I give you that. I give you that. 
Yeah, but that's that's one thing that I want to see in uh, in in future episodes is that if they bring uh, if they bring Starlight Glimmer back, I want to know if this was her uh, her plan all along, and there was no other thing that he had been uh, delusional mm. about what she was doing. Or if there was an ulterior motive that was moving her, because she was very keen on keeping the the main six cutie marks, not just Twilight Sparkles. Well, she wanted to keep the cutie marks of the elements of harmony. Yeah. Like, why would she want to keep the six of them when she only seemed to be interested in keeping Twilights? Mm. So I want to know what they are going to take her. We might know more as the epi- as the season goes on, but um, as they as Twilight finishes her friendship speech, as Starlight Glimmer makes a flash spell and runs away and she escapes. And that is actually a very... I like that. I like that they don't resolve it because in real life, sometimes the bad guy always gets away. Yeah, you, just look at the Gadget. You cannot stop everybody. Yeah, but well, with Inspector Gadget, he's kind of a running villain. <laughs> this is kind of like the first time that we had a full-blown antagonist that doesn't get punished. Unless you count taking the village and, and away from her and losing all the cutie marks as punishment, but she doesn't get like a she doesn't get banished to Tartarus or uh, <laughs> exiled or destroyed or redeemed or anything. She just That's, leaves. We, which we can just say that um, Starlight Glimmer is going to nip them in the butt once more. Well, well let's hope that let's hope that happens. And I think. Really, what we can take away is the friendship lesson as expressed by Megan McCarthy via Twitter. So the friendship lesson here is never follow weirdos into caves. <laughs> I agree. This is a I tweet that. that makes sense. All hail the wisdom of this tweet. All <laughs> hail the wisdom. All hail, all the, hail the wisdom. All hail. All hail. <laughs> yeah. And, well, after that uneventful escape from the villain... Uh, all our characters are back in town, and apparently all the townsfolks are going to stay here and, well, live their lives in said town. And I'm wondering, why is Colgate over there? Colgate is over there? Yeah. Uh, I didn't, well, I didn't see her on the first go or second yeah. go. Let's oh, see wait, that's not, oh, sorry, that's not Colgate. There's, that's a Colgate recolor. Ah, uh, treachery. Yes, same, Tread. same, same pony design, different cunio mark. Sorry next about that. You'll be, next, you'll be telling us Derpy's there. I wish. <laughs> Derpy was nowhere to be seen in that episode, actually. Yeah. We haven't seen her yet in the in what we have of season, but, well, we only have three episodes. So mm-hmm. True, it, true, true, true. Track. But, yeah, the, I am glad to see that they are going to stay in the town because it is clear that uh, why would they leave if the town is perfectly fine? Now they will be able to start living their lives and know each other better. Well, and, technically, the way that this village was established was... Starlight Glimmer recruited or tricked them into staying and giving up their cutie marks. And the whole town, well, it seems that they want to give this town a chance because there's a reason for them to travel all the way here and probably for a better life or something like that. And, well, who knows? Maybe after this, they will have a, they will have a stable economy to raise their town and Make it official or make it something special for everyone there. Uh, a stable economy. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I can't believe that you did that, Norman. Uh. <laughs> uh, how could you, Norman? Uh, you know me. Yes, and... I would. I would never do such a thing. Never, <laughs> ever, ever. You're right. <laughs> oh no, you wouldn't. Ne- no, you're innocent. Mm. Innocent. Yeah. Totally innocent. Uh, uh, I wish you could yeah, see my I... nose growing. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're a hippogriff, so I think it's um, it's already big enough. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow! So but, uh, hmm? yeah, I mean that is a new horse episode, new season of horse show. Oh, horse James, show you're, you're, one and... you're skipping one thing. You're skipping one thing important. Oh, what am I skipping? Applejack's face when her flank is vibrating. <laughs> Aye, 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 aye. <laughs> yeah. So I, I, I don't know. I mean, does this mean a uh, case over? Cutie Mark Powers Ahoy? What does this mean for the future? Because I want to see another episode like this where we get an established shot of, okay, once case is over, Frank vibrates. I want to know. Well, you know how in video games you get something like uh, quest completed? 
Feel like that? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, why not? Why not getting the same? Uh, the, I, I guess it's the indicator of everything is fine. Well, everything one is fine. <laughs> well, here's the thing because uh, if you notice the the animation of the kitty market vibrating is different. Uh, yeah, I think so. I, I I need to re re watch it for the second time to take a look see, but I guess so. Although uh, I I like to think Twilight's all like well Fluttershy asks. Does this mean the tree's calling us on another mission? And Twilight's like, no, I, I figure it's just let us know we did a job well done. I just picture a giant demon stopping through Manhattan. <laughs> and everyone's wondering, where are the main six? Where are the main six? <laughs> oh, me, God. Me, meanwhile, in Counterlot, Cogatrice infestation, a hydro attack in the palace, <laughs> Princess Celestia and Princess Luna have been overwhelmed by it. Twilight, we're calling you! Where are James, you? are you sure it's not the Everfree Forest taking over? <laughs> In the, in, the mean, in the meantime, Twilight is at the spa having a having a oh. Oh, wow. So, oh, wow. we, and with that, episode's <laughs> over. And with that, episode's over. Oh. <sighs> so, final thoughts, guys. Final thoughts. A really enjoyable episode, equally parts entertaining and unnerving in a positive way, with a, a very different approach to the formula and a fun way to start the season. I'm expecting... Grand epic mage battles, or at least, you know, big bads at the end of the season. But starting it off with this really sets an alternate tone and just uh, reminded me of how much I enjoyed the show for going against expectations. Mm -hmm. True, true. And as for me, I enjoyed this episode. Like, the season premiere, it's not bombastic as before. It didn't put its, it didn't put our hopes and expectations to a higher level to me what they said here was okay this is how the show is going to carry on from now on where our main six are going to travel from land to land solving problems uh, spreading friendship throughout the land and we got no idea how they're going to do it in the future probably it's going to be the six of them the four of them two of them probably but this is setting a tone of an adventure style show where Characters go to set town, location, event, and solve the problem. And for the villain, like Starlight Glimmer here, to me she was a perfect villain for set scenario. It was not too big, it was not too small. Yet she was powerful enough to take down Twilight when she was not ready for it. So what does that say about her power level? She could be even stronger than she seems. And, well... I'm expecting things from her in the future to see where this character goes on from that point. Is she going to um, create another village of uh, equalists or is she going to train harder and take down Twilight? Who knows? You were speaking a lot, Norman. <laughs> <laughs> that was very long. Um, it took me a while to... Uh, it took me like a couple of days to say, okay, let's... Um, the hype of season 5 dying out. Let's see if this episode still holds up. Because when I watched it, I had a very good first impression. And usually when I watch a premiere, there is always a period of time where I was like, oh my god, this is the best episode ever, this is amazing, ah! And then the enthusiasm dies out, because uh, it's like, oh, okay, great, first episode of the season, this is always exciting. And then we go back on the groove of watching MLP every Saturday, and that's it. Uh, this is one of those episodes where the enthusiasm doesn't die out, that it remains, that it stays alive even after the, even after the fact that you have already, you have, it's finally a new season, it's finally a new beginning. And it manages to maintain it, which is so weird. Uh, and so kind of like rare in this day and age that it, it managed to hold up the, the season hype, at least for me. But the one thing that I really loved, uh, I, I, I love these two episodes, but I love the fact that the villain is not a giant monster and the heroes of the day, of the day are not, uh, only the main six. That I love that it's telling you that anyone could be a bad guy and anyone could be a hero. That is such a good message. It's a, it's a message of hope for those who can be heroes, and it's a warning for those who we have to be looking at, looking looking for. Like, oh, you have to be careful. Anybody could be a, a bad guy out there. So, True. 
love that. Love those love those concepts. Love the cult uh, uh, message. Like kids don't join cults. It's mm-hmm. bad. No, seriously, it is bad. We had that problem in the eighties and nineties, and we're still having it today. Watch it. Don't follow weirdos into caves. <laughs> true, true. I subscribe to that message. Mm-hmm. But yeah, cults are bad. Is, okay. <laughs> when, it, when it comes to cults are bad. Okay. So it's um. When it comes to two parters, and I am going to rate this as as, uh, as two parters go, uh, from a personal standpoint, this is my second favorite two parter of the series. Ooh. Like it trampled, it trampled uh, two parters that I really loved, like the Crystal Empire or the season four uh, finale. Um, but I I wasn't as eng- I was very engaged on it, but not as much as I was with uh, the season four premiere. Um, because I I love uh, the cutie map. Episodes, but I like the, the, the Princess Twilight Sparkle episodes more because while the Cutie Map episodes still had a villain, Princess Twilight Sparkle didn't have a villain at all. It was a continuous flashback to tell you where these characters were coming from. So, uh, but it is an excellent two part. It has trampled every other two parter except that one. So yeah, great one. It was, it was awesome. Now it's funny you mentioned, uh, Twilight's Kingdom, because I, too, still hold that in just slightly higher, I don't know if I would say higher regard, but it's the it's the season premiere I'll point to say this is my favorite. Uh, but the thing about season four is that they had such good ideas in the Twilight's, uh, Princess Twilight premiere, but they never capitalized on. She never mm-hmm. really dealt with being a princess. Uh, they never really had to de- face a crisis without magical super weapons at some point. This was a great start, but I really want to see can the show move forward with the ideas they presented here. Yeah, that's, that's the thing because in Twilight's Castle, that one was amazing where you have a DBZ style fight, and in this one, it's a bit toned down. But like I said before, it's the what you call this? It's the idea they presented to us where anything can happen from this point on. And like I said, I can't wait to see what they do with it. One thing that I liked is, uh, oddly enough, it comes from a quote from Equestria Hurdles, which is kind of funny. But do you remember that moment where Prince, where Principal Celestia is giving Twilight the the crown, mm-hmm. g- returning her the, the element her element of harmony, and she's like, uh, a leader doesn't uh, get others working with her by intimidating them, but by standing by them and inspiring them. And I'm like, that is exactly what Twilight and the main six did with the, with the equalized ponies. True, true. They, they made them realize that this is, that there are many ways of, there is many styles of, styles of living and finding friendship, but this is getting friendship forced in your face. <laughs> this is forced. Nothing, nothing should be forced. They motivated them and inspired them to move to a better lifestyle. That was that. Uh, that is something that I get out of it, and I like that. So yeah, that that was great. This is this was a great two parter, and I am so glad um, to see that Emily Larson still has his thing about making the the main six suffer because of their special talents and personalities. <laughs> but he's an expert in making them suffer. Like in the Magical Mystery Cure, swap their cutie marks. The Return of Harmony changed their personalities and warp them and and discord them. And in this one, take them away and and replace them with equal signs. Wow! Like he is an expert at making the main six suffer, and I am so happy to see him back. Oh uh, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> uh, we need more of him in the future. I agree. We need more. So anyway, uh, James, what we'll be reviewing next week? Well, because we're gonna ha- have this uh, spy stuff, and we cannot get everybody um, uh, together to keep reviewing the the episode with us. We are going to be reviewing a comic. Uh, we are not going to drop the comic book reviews. Um, just because the show has started doesn't mean we have to stop uh, reviewing the comics. Right, guys? True. Right, so? Mm-hmm. So we are going to go back to the Friends Forever issues uh, since we are waiting for the main series to uh, catch up. The latest comic that they released over there was the wrestling comic. We're going to mm-hmm. wait until they have a few more. But next week we are going to be reviewing... The Fluttershy and Iron Wheel, Friends Forever. Mm-hmm. And, That's going to be uh, fun. That one, that one I, I am really looking forward to reviewing that one. I really am. 
So I hope that you all guys are ready for us to uh, talk about that comic. But for now, uh, this is the end of the Season 5, Episodes 1 and 2 review. I cannot believe that we are back to ponies. Uh, yet, yet another thing that has happened while waiting for Half-Life Episode 3. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. Yes. Add to it. Oh my gosh. So many things have happened until then. But, guys, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for listening. We'll see you next time. This has been James Cork. And I have been Norman Sanzo. And I am a hippogriff without equal. <laughs> uh, see you guys next time. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Adios. I give up. <laughs>